What's up guys, Nostalgic Girl back with another finds video here and also I'm gonna make this video kind of a little channel update. Obviously February 20th is just a day away and YouTube's gonna be doing a lot of big changes so I'm gonna let you guys know kind of my thoughts and also I haven't been around for quite a while so kind of update you on everything and what's going on and what to expect in the future. But first let's get to all these different things I've found. Now I haven't had a finds video in about a year more or less and that's just because I just haven't had much time to do it and I haven't been searching as much so I've got a few things here not a ton um, but at the same time it's just really I'm starting to kind of phase out a little bit of my collecting or at least trying to go out and search as much which again I'll kind of update on why that is but I do have a few things here so up first um, around Christmas time I got an eBay lot um, it's about 150 bucks or so it's really hard for me to find NES games anymore more, especially in lots that have games that like I just don't have typically when I come across a lot um, I have most of the games and I can flip a few or whatever but a lot of them are obviously garbage titles or you know whatever so it was really really exciting for me when I came across this lot because it had a lot of games that I still didn't have and they weren't like premium top titles so I didn't have to pay a ton for it which was awesome so I'm gonna quickly roll through it here it's about 30 some games um, if I recall correctly so up first here it's in multiple bags so I apologize here uh, so up first we have Wrestlemania Challenge Tubin, the Tengen title, which is actually kind of cool that from what I played there a little bit. Uh, Rambo and Chess Master. Keep things moving here. Like I said, I got I got piles. I should uh, take a shot of the floor to show you guys what I'm working with here. Uh, also, we got Iron Tank and we got Goonies 2, the terrible game there. Moving right along. Like I said, about half of these I had, half of these I didn't, so that's why this is really cool. So we got Super Super Spike Volleyball and World Cup, which I have played quite a bit, and with, it's tough. <laughs> I was having trouble trying to get things lined up. Uh, you got Tag Team Muscle there, um, and Black Bass, classic fishing game that probably everyone has in their collection no matter what. All right, next you got Bad Dudes. You got Russian Attack. You got Lee Trevino's Fighting Golf. John Elway's quarterback club and slalom perfect timing for the Olympics anyway no this is kind of a cool game too it is one that I did not have so excited to get that next more of these games that I didn't have gauntlet 2 adventures of Tom Sawyer obviously a game I did have because it's one of the reviews I got adventures of Bayou Billy underrated game uncanny x-men Wolverine, Miracle Piano, Ring King. This was the one, this was actually the game, this was the one that I wanted to go after. So this is why I was really excited to get it because this is one that I wanted to play and heard great things about it. Monster Party. So really excited to add this one. Special thanks to Chimps Comics apparently. <laughs> You got Michael Andretti's World GP. You got Tailspin. And then also Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Six. And then finally, out of that lot, just kicking all these games around. We got one big batch from that lot. So you got Elevator Action. You got Kings of the Beach. Burger Time, another one I was excited to add to my collection. You got Major League Baseball. MTV Remote Control, what an interesting game, one that I definitely need to do uh, a review on, it was, it's a, yeah, uh, <laughs> Mission Impossible, and then finally the last little batch of those games, you got Wrath of the Black Manta, uh, Defender of the Crown, Dick Tracy, another one I didn't have, and I know it's a terrible game, but now I have it. Uh, Arch Rivals, which was cool to check out because I'm a huge NBA Jam fan. And finally, the m other main one that I was after, and that is Chippendale Rescue Rangers. I've never had this game. I've never played this game. I've always wanted to. Obviously, a lot of people love this game. So to have this in my collection is like kind of like a holy grail of sorts for me, to be honest with you, is this one. Because yeah, for some reason, never find it in stores, never found it anywhere. Anytime I would see it in lots and I could never win the lot. So this was actually the game I was targeting 
um, when I came across this lot. So like I said, about 150 bucks in all, which I don't think is too bad because I think if uh, you add up the main games anyway, the, the Primo titles, it's about 150 right there. So not not too bad at all. So the other stuff that I picked up, um, little things I'll, I'll just start grabbing here. So obviously there's a little system that came out that was huge. I was there waiting in line at a Target at, let's see here, I got out there at six in the morning when they opened at seven. Um, and I was fifth in line, so I was guaranteed one, and that is, of course, the SNES Classic. So happy to have this. This is this has been a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed it, um, and it's been great for my kids too. I got a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and they both play it from time to time. So um, yeah, I, you know, hands down, I think you need to get this if you're even e even considering buying one. Go for it. The NES Classic, I didn't think was worth it. This was totally worth it. Anyway, <laughs> other stuff. Um, there was a, one of my favorite video game stores decided to uh, close up. Basically, they had two stores. The lease was up on one, and they said, yeah, we're just we're done with that one. So I stopped in multiple times and bought different things. Um, so up first, uh, some things. Now, this is one game I got before I won it, so it was kind of a waste of time. Actually, both these games, and that's uh, Fighting Golf and John Elway Quarterback. And then I picked up Body Harvest on the 64. Uh, some more NES games. Goal. And then again, I didn't know I was going to win a lot with it, which was MTV Remote Control. So kind of wasted my money on that. Um, but whatever, I didn't know at the time. Um, and then another 64 game, um, Armorines. Is that how you say it? Um, Project Swarm. So obviously these titles are not primo titles that I picked up. Um, they didn't really have that great of a deal for on the primo stuff. So, um, also then War Gods, which I always thought looked cool based on the label, but I know it's a terrible game. And then 007, The World Is Not Enough. And then when I stopped in another time, grab some more stuff. So when I stopped in another time, I picked up the titles of, on the Xbox, you got Battlefront 2, Star Wars, great game. Original Dead Rising, the Platinum Hits Edition. The Mummy, I have no idea if this is a good game or terrible game, but it was like the only PlayStation game um, that they had on their super cheap rack that I was like, this might be worth a little bit more than that. Um, and then Tokyo Extreme Racing on the Sega Dreamcast. No idea if it's good or not. And I got a multi-tap for the PlayStation. Never had one before, so excited to add that. And then for the SNES, you got Tiny Toons, Buster Bust Loose, and then Stunt Race FX. I really wish I had known that this game was at least like a $15 game. I got it for like two bucks and they had a whole stack of them. And I was like, oh, I'll just grab the one. Like, I know it's not that great of a game. And then I went home and I was like, oh shoot, I could flip these quick. And then by the time I got back there, someone else had already had the same idea. All right, and then finally from that store, uh, one more time that I swung in there and a few pickups. Uh, picked up um, a couple of Game Gear games, so Surf Ninjas, and let's see here, the Green Dog, which, yeah, interesting game. I <laughs> need to play a little bit more. And then picked up a completed game, um, not, not the greatest box on it, but uh, I'm sure it's a high quality game, and that is Barbie for the NES. <laughs> so I, I debating if I even want to pull this out of the wrapping or not. I probably will, but um, yeah, I'm sure it's a great game. And then picked up a good old fishing controller for the Dreamcast, which this is where you gotta, you always gotta kind of watch it when you're buying this stuff uh, from a used store, especially one that you can't do returns like this one. And the cord on it is a little shoddy, unfortunately. Um, still works, still, still seem good, but you just gotta get this and position just right. So a little disappointed in that, especially since I still paid a decent price for it. Um, but yeah, oh, whatever, that's what happens. I knew I was taking that risk. All right, and then um, garage sales didn't really hit any up this year. I had my uh, parents, they, they came across one and they've got this booklet of PS2 games for me. Um, I haven't even looked at it since they brought it over. Um, so uh, a few memory cards in there. I mean, I think there's probably more games in here that somebody like probably rifled through. Um, I do recall it's a lot of just common titles, sports titles. Um, but there's a few good things in here that they um, mentioned to me that I was like, yeah, grab it for that. Like I got the PS2 version of Battlefront 2 now, um, as well as um, 
actually a couple copies for some reason. <laughs> There's a couple in here, as well as uh, the Lego Star Wars. Um, yeah, that's probably about it. I mean, it's all like Ridge Racer, stuff like that, Need for Speed, um, Cool Borders, like a lot, a lot of super common games. Um, but um, Star Wars Starfighter, that was one I haven't come across yet that I know it's not worth much, but... I'm a Star Wars guy, <laughs> so wanted to get that. Um, but yeah, so that's where I, I don't think they paid 34. Maybe they did. Um, but anyway, so they they got that. So I'm not normally a loose game kind of guy, but I was like, yeah, whatever, grab it. Um, and then uh, picked up um, one. This one was a um, from uh, GameSpot. <laughs> Or GameStop, sorry, not GameSpot. Uh, GameStop. Um, I was picking up some games for my nephew for his birthday and whatever deal they're running at that time, probably like four used games for 20 bucks. Um, I picked up Hitman on the 360 because I really love the Hitman series and have not played any of like the newer ones, like pretty much only played Xbox and PS2 versions. So I'm um, excited to try this out at some point. And then at a garage sale, I picked up a bunch of Xbox One games for like three bucks. I think. And then one of the other games that I picked up that they had um, was the Middle Earth Shadows of Mordor. So um, not not a big uh, fan, token fan really, but I know this game's supposed to be kind of cool. So thought that was a decent deal. All right, then um, from my brother, he gave me a few of his Kinect stuff because he's like, we don't use it, whatever. Um, so I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. Um, so I got my Kinect, which is upstairs now, or his Kinect, um, and then with the games of DECA Sports, as well as Kinect Adventures, and per the Kinect, they're kind of crappy. <laughs> they don't really work that well. Um, and then a few extra controllers and stuff uh, that he gave me. There's four of them. So, you know, just handed them over, so that was cool. Um, and then finally, my Goodwill pile. Um, I still stop in a Goodwill once in a while, but as, as I've talked about before, since I moved to my new town, my Goodwill there just isn't as good. I come across some things from time to time, but I'm pretty sure they get most of their stuff. Any, any video game stuff, they put it up um, uh, up online or whatever. There's only there's only a few Xbox PS2 titles and they're all super common and that's it. But every once in a blue moon I come across something like I came across a PS3 one day that I was just like, oh my gosh, it's only like 10 bucks, this would be so cool. And then it was, um, it, it's not the red ring, but basically it was dead anyway. <laughs> so stuff like that, that that's kind of what I come across now. But I do, do come across a few cool things here. So up first we have some controllers. So, Got this little, uh, let's see, what's it? The the GC system product number two gun. So it works well, I tested it out, so very cool. And then I got the Duke, KKS Duke. So yeah, excited to always add controllers like the Duke and such, even though I'm not, not a big fan of the Duke myself, but just to be able to have some extra controllers is nice. I was always more a fan of the the black and white being down here on your more standard controller but otherwise i mean it's a fine controller but just some games it was better by button positioning all right and then as i'm losing my voice i'm fighting out a little bit cold if you haven't noticed um let's see here found a ps1 the little guy um and it had nhl 2000 in it not a big deal but hey good score and it had the controller um and then also picked up complete in box Tecmo Super NBA Basketball, so for the Genesis, so again, not, not, a, not a huge score, but you know, like I said, I take what I can get sometimes. And then Resident Evil Code Veronica, which was a game that I was like, oh cool, I'll pick it up. And then, you know, as I already had my collection, even though I did double check on my list, I gotta come up with a better list, I just used a um, Google <laughs> spreadsheet, uh, and clearly there's been times where I buy stuff and then I'm like, wait, I already have this, all right. So, it happens, I need to find something a little better. All right, and then, came across this is one that I was surprised because usually they know the pricing of these games but got Pokemon Omega Ruby on the 3DS so like a newer game um, picked it up for under a couple or just a couple bucks so not for sure how they, that one slipped and then I also got let's see Rebel Assault 2 which is one that I had in my collection but it's just one of those Star Wars games that I'm like you know I'm just gonna grab it and then one that I was excited that and surprised that I came across this one, and which is Fighting Force 2, which I don't think it's worth a lot, but Fighting Force, uh, obviously it was a cool game. Fighting Force 2, I have no idea uh, if that was any good or not. 
And then finally, finally, I know, thanks for sticking this far along, or if you skipped ahead, that's cool too. <laughs> but finally, um, other things that I picked up at Goodwill, um, Connectimals. Just picked it up because I thought maybe my kids would like it. They don't. <laughs> so it was all with the connecting. They had a bunch of games, and I was like, I'll try this one. Yeah, they didn't care. Um, and then for the PS2, um, Sub Rebellion and Spawn Armageddon. So that's it. That's that's all the games that I've picked up in this past year. So like I said, not a ton, especially considering what, what I was doing in the past. Um, just haven't had the time for it. And the reason why... I haven't had time for it and why things have been kind of the way they are with this channel and moving forward is bump, 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 the channel update side of this video. So as I've mentioned, obviously I haven't really been around a whole lot. I've been doing a lot of different things um, and I may have mentioned it in a previous video. I, I don't even recall now because things have just been crazy. I've been meaning to release a lot of videos. I haven't like I have a review. I've had the review lined up for over eight months. I just need to upload it and I just haven't. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it's been crazy and that's because um, a lot has changed for me on a personal level. Yes, it's gonna be one of those things <laughs> where it's, it's a personal blah, blah, blah. Uh, long story short, um, I do video production for a living and I was working a full-time job doing it and was also doing it freelance as well and running my own company. And the freelance thing was always just kind of a very, very side gig thing. I more or less set it up when I moved to Minnesota just so I had something to get things rolling to make it look like I was super busy and needed um, as I was applying for jobs. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, but I always wanted to build that up and then make it my own thing and that be my full-time job is my own company. And so this past year, I really got into shooting um, a lot of videos and the main thing being weddings out of all things um wedding videography and found myself just really enjoying it and next thing i knew i had one summer that the previous summer i shot over 30 some weddings and i wasn't editing any of the videos though so i could i would be gone all weekend shooting stuff and then working my full-time um regular gig and then i fell into editing those videos and so then this past year i went from shooting 30 some weddings and that's it to shooting and editing 30 some weddings and um if you have a full-time job and you are also trying to run a side business you understand how crazy that can get especially when not only am i giving up every weekend to shoot these weddings but then i have to find time throughout the week to edit it so therefore uh we made the decision that the time is now and i am now running my own company full time with the main focus being wedding videography but i'm also providing wedding or not wedding <laughs> video services for other clients and such so it's very cool finally things kind of coming together the way that you know i always hoped it would be uh back seven almost eight years ago now when I set up the company um, so so it was very cool but unfortunately for the YouTube side of things it all went downhill and I couldn't keep up with it um, and then I was hoping that now that I'm finally kind of getting caught up with things um, I, I have you know months before I have to actually give over the wedding videos when I shoot them so that was always kind of what I was doing just constantly editing 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 and then going and shooting stuff and then editing some more and so I was finally hitting a point here that I was like all right I can get back to doing some YouTube videos I was planning on like you know maybe like a weekly thing or something like that and mixing things up but then when YouTube announced recently about um, what they're doing with the creators aspect and demonetizing a ton of channels obviously my channel is one of them I'm a very small channel you know that it is what it is uh, I, I had to take another step back and say well okay like I, I know I've gone on record before being like yeah it's not for the money and then it's been for the money and then ha you know I know I've kind of bounced back and forth on my explanation on things but I kind of felt that I was starting to hit a little bit of momentum when I was doing some stuff and starting to see a few things and starting to see views. And I still actually, to be honest with you, I my views, I'm surprised I'm still getting decent views considering I haven't really produced anything in a year. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like I'm kind of on this bubble of like, well, do I try committing to it, getting a thousand subs and four hundred? 40,000 minutes or whatever it is, do I try aiming for that or do I just curb expectations and just say, no, this is just, it, it's nothing more than just a fun thing to do. Um, 
And so I've been going back and forth on that. And what I've kind of decided with my channel now is that um, it's it's still going to be kind of a, a channel that I, I'm going to be producing videos for. Um, but I'm going to be kind of be doing more of the videos that I like, which are actually my live streams that I do uh, with the nostalgic first and playing games for the first time. Um, so that's going to kind of what I focus on more now. The review side of things I'm going to put on the back burner. If I have time to do some, I'm going to do them. Um, but I'm not going to have a set schedule for them because obviously I have clients and everything now that I need to produce their videos first. And so then they, they have to take that priority because that's how I make money. <laughs> and especially now that YouTube uh, is just going to make it really hard for me to kind of gain that momentum um, again um, without producing a ton of videos and everything. Um, I'm, I'm going to focus more on the live streaming aspect of it. And so I do want to have it set up where eventually, um, if it's every other week, I go on a live stream and play for an hour or so, just something like that, just to get things going. Uh, because those are actually the videos that I've been seeing the most hits from and seeing the most like minutes watched and everything else. I do have some reviews. Like I really wish I could keep up with like doing old old school TV shows. I have a ton of shows that I wanted to do and had captured ready to roll. Um, just had to sit down and write scripts and it, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, those take a lot of time and I'm glad that those videos are kind of my more watched videos. Um, but I just simply don't have the time to put into those right now. Um, if I do happen to hit a thousand subs and like I can start monetizing and maybe I'd start a Patreon at that point, then maybe things can be delegated a little differently and I can focus on uh, producing other content, but that's where I'm still kind of in a wait and a see because right now my client work for my company is just kind of overtaking things and that's where obviously I need to focus it. Um, so yeah, so as far as finds videos, they're disappearing. Um, as far as movie reviews, I'll still probably do some of those like if I go to the theaters and see a new one, um, but you know, I don't see too many new movies out in theaters right now. Probably the next one I'm going to see is Solo. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, if I do have other thoughts or other videos to release, I will do them. Just there won't be a schedule for them. Like I need to, uh, with the one video game review that I've had done for eight months now, I just simply need to do it. So that'll probably be something that I'll get up soon. And then also with my video, like with the Tough Mudder and stuff like that, I'm doing Tough Mudder again this year. So like I might do more some of those type of videos. Um, we'll see. That's where I'm debating on whether or not I put those on my company's channel because they that has a, its own channel. Um, just focused on what videos I do for my clients and stuff that I can promote. So uh, I'm not going to do a big push on that or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> basically, if you, if you don't care about wedding videos, you don't care about uh, that, that company. So anyway, that's what's kind of going on. So I'm hoping to start within the next week or two to get the live stream going again. With that though, I'm also going to be potentially moving things over to Twitch and doing like kind of a double Twitch YouTube live stream thing. I'm still looking into that um, that aspect of it. So, because I do want to reach a broader audience and I don't know how limited the new YouTube is going to be. Um, that's Those are the options I'm still figuring out. But anyway, for those of you that have tuned into those nostalgic first and you checked me out playing games for the first time, thank you. I, like I, I really do appreciate everyone that's been on watching these channels uh, or watching these videos. Um, you know, I just unfortunately I can't commit myself to it um, like I was able to in the past. So, but hopefully things kind of change around and I'll get more momentum. And then you know, if YouTube changes things again and you know raises the bar again for a slower content creator. Uh, sub people, you know, fine, then that's what they're going to do. But um, as a whole, like, I do enjoy this channel. I do like doing it, but it's definitely, you know, it's just not there for me that, as far as being able to commit to it a ton. So anyway, uh, if you guys have any thoughts, questions, or whatever, please let me know if you have any advice as far as trying to do Twitch and YouTube. I'd love to hear about it because I really don't know much about Twitch other than that, you know, I know it's a popular video game thing. Uh, I just, I haven't gone on it. Um, but yeah, I do still have a lot of stuff going on. Um, uh, one other thing that I want to mention um, that I'm hoping to kind of work with a little bit more on um, is that I'll be helping out with 
the Tech Mobile Madison uh, tournament. So I'm hoping to at least get some videos shot there or something like that, maybe put together a little collection. So that will be cool. Um, and you guys can kind of check out the behind the scenes of that because I'll probably be, um, I'm definitely going to be helping out with them. So it's just a matter of wh what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, like I said, um, you know, whether I make another Tough Mudder video or not, uh, I probably will. Uh, that, you know, so thanks for those who have checked that out. And then reviews, if, if I can get around to playing games, <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens out. Cause outside of the SNES classic there, I, I just, I really haven't played any games. I had Punisher sitting there for the last year in my Sega Genesis. Cause that was going to be one of the next games I reviewed and just haven't, haven't had much time. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, I just want to thank everyone for checking me out for those who subbed. Um, you know, even if you just kind of occasionally drop in, that's awesome. I really do appreciate it. And I'm hoping to get this channel kind of back up and functioning more normally and not just taking months off at a time like I have. Um, so I will be back. And again, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. And until next time.